Hello and welcome back to the Gospel Teachings of R.A.K. This is Jacob, and today we're going to be going into the second part of Judgment. Um, if you haven't watched the first one, I urge you to go watch that first. They are very much going to be intertwined. Um, so I'm going to start the second one with Ecclesiasticus chapter 40, verse 14. Transgressors shall pine away in the end, or lose vigor, health, or flesh, yearn for something unattainable. Next verse, the offspring of the ungodly shall not bring forth many branches or children. Ecclesiasticus 41 verse 14, the mourning of men is about their body, but the name of the ungodly shall be blotted out. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 9, when you shall do your judgments on the earth, the inhabitants of the world shall learn justice. Isaiah 27 1, in that day, the Lord with his hard and great and strong sword shall visit or punish Leviathan, the bar serpent, which is big and powerful unjust lawyers who belong to the American Bar Association and Leviathan, the crooked serpent or big and powerful crooks, and shall slay the whale that is in the sea. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 2 as well as 17 through 19. Behold, the Lord is mighty and strong as a storm of hail, a destroying whirlwind, as the violence of many waters overflowing, and sent forth upon a spacious land. And I will set judgment and weight, and justice and measure. And hail shall overturn the hope of falsehood, and water shall overflow its protections. And your league with death shall be abolished, and your covenant with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass, you shall be trodden down by it. Whensoever it shall pass through, it shall take you away, because in the morning early it shall pass through, in the day and in the night, and vexation alone shall make you understand what you hear. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 6. And it shall be at an instant suddenly, a visitation shall come from the Lord of hosts in thunder, and with earthquake, and with a great noise of whirlwind, and tempest, and with the flame of devouring fire. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 30, And the Lord shall make the glory of his voice to be heard, and shall show the terror of his arm, and the threatening of wrath, and the flame of devouring fire. He shall crush to pieces the whirlwind and hailstones. Isaiah 34, 5, For my sword is inebriated in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia, and upon the people of my daughter unto judgment. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 3, O Lord, your eyes are upon truth. You have struck them, and they have not grieved. You have bruised them, and they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than the rock, and they have refused to return. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 12, They have denied the Lord, and said, It is not he, and the evil shall not come upon us. We shall not see the sword and famine. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7, 12, and 17. But my people have not known the judgment of the Lord. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall fall, says the Lord. For behold, I will send among you serpents, balisks, against which there is no charm. And they shall bite you, says the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 24. Correct me, O Lord, but yet with judgment, and not in your fury, lest you bring me to nothing. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17, And they shall be my special possession, says the Lord of hosts, in the day that I do judgment, and I will spare them, as a man spares his son that serves him. Jeremiah eleven twenty two. Behold, I will visit upon them, their young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. Jeremiah 25, 31-33 The noise is come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord enters into judgment with the nations. He enters into judgment with all flesh. The wicked I have delivered up to the sword, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall go forth from the ends of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even to the other end thereof. 
They shall not be lamented, and they shall not be gathered up, nor buried. They shall lie as dung upon the face of the earth. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 11 and 15. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. For I will utterly consume all the nations, among which I have scattered you. But I will not utterly consume you, but I will chastise you in judgment, that you may not seem to yourself innocent. Why cry you for your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable. For the multitude of your iniquity and for your hardened sins, I have done these things to you. Jeremiah 46, 28, Jacob, I will correct you in judgment. Neither will I spare you as if you were innocent. That's speaking to the Jews. When you see Jacob, since Jacob is the father of the Jews and his name was turned to Israel, um, we can specifically see there that God is talking to the Jews. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 1 and 4. I am the man that see my poverty by the rod of his indignation. My skin and my flesh he has made old. He has broken my bones. Lamentations 3.16 And he has broken my teeth one by one. He has fed me with ashes. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 39 Why has a living man murmured? Man suffering for his sins. Lamentations 3, 65 and 66, you shall give them a buckler or a blockage of heart, your labor or work. You shall persecute them in anger and shall destroy them from under the heavens, O Lord. Also referencing 1 Kings 25, verse 37 through 39. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 5, 10 through 17 is famine, evil beasts, pestilence, and sword. Um, Jerusalem. Chapter 7, 27, God judges according to their judgments. Chapter 14, verse 21, there's four grievous judgments, uh, same as Ezekiel 5. 28, verses 22 through 23, pestilence and the sword, judgments of Sidon. 30 is the sword of Nebuchadnezzar on Egypt. 38, 21 through 22 is against Gog and nations with him. Sword, blood, pestilence, violent rain, and vast hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Chapter 39, verses 21 through 23, Israel taken captive for their iniquity, the sword. And that's all Ezekiel. Jumping to Daniel chapter 3, 28, it's captivity because of their sins, which is the Jews. Um, chapter 3, verse 31 through 32 is captivity. Chapter 7, 9 through 10, the Ancient of Days sat, judgment sat, a billion stood before him, and the books were opened. Also referencing ap Apocalypse or Revelation chapter 5, verse 11, as well as chapter 20, verse 12. Asi, chapter 8, verse 13, now will he remember their iniquity and will visit their sins. Asi 9, verse 7, the days of visitation are come, the days of repaying are come. Asi chapter 9, verse 11 through 14, as well as 16 through 17, as for Ephraim, their glory has flown from has flown away like a bird. And though they should bring up their children, I will make them without children among men. They will live far away from their parents. Yes, and woe to them when I shall depart from them. Ephraim, as I saw, was a tear founded in beauty. And Ephraim shall bring out his children to the murderer, which is the abortionist. Give them, O Lord. What will you give them? Give them a womb without children and dry breasts. And if they should have issue, I will slay the best beloved fruit of their womb. My God will cast them away, because they hearken not to him, and they shall be wanderers among the nations. Aussie chapter 13 verse 15, Because he, or Ephraim, shall make a separation between brothers, the Lord will bring a burning wind, that shall rise from the desert, and it shall dry up his springs, and shall make his fountain desolate. And he shall carry off the treasure of every desirable vessel. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. And I will restore you the ears which the locust and the brucus and the mildew and the palmer worm have eaten, my great host which I sent upon you. Also referencing Joel chapter 1 verse 4. Joel chapter 3 verse 21 says, And I will cleanse their blood which I had not cleansed. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 12, 
For behold, I will raise up the Chaldeans, a bitter and swift nation. They are dreadful and terrible. From themselves shall their judgment and their burden proceed. And their prince, King Nebuchadnezzar, shall triumph over kings. Lord, you have appointed him for judgment and made him strong for correction. Sophonias chapter 1 verse 8 And it shall come to pass in the day of the victim of the Lord, that I will visit upon all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Agias chapter 2 verse 18 I struck you with a blasting wind, and all the works of your hand with the mildew and with hail. Yet there was none among you that returned to me, says the Lord. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 8 and 9 And there shall be in all the earth, says the Lord, two parts in it shall be scattered, and shall perish, but the third part shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, You are my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. Malachi chapter 4, verses 1-3 through three. For behold, the day shall come kindled as a furnace, and all the proud, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, or have limbs cut off, leaving only a stub in place of a hand, arm, foot, or leg. And the day that comes shall set them on fire, says the Lord of hosts. It shall not leave them root or branch. And you that fear my name shall tread down the wicked, when they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet. In the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Psalm chapter 36, verse 28 and 38. The unjust shall be punished, and the seed of the wicked shall perish. But the unjust shall be destroyed together. The remnants of the wicked shall perish. 2 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 32 and 33. We suffer chastisement and correction for our sins. Chapter 7, verse 36. Antiochus to be punished by judgment of God for pride. Chapter 9, verse 18, Antiochus punished by unceasing pains as judgment of God. 2 Maccabees chapter 12, verse 40 and 41, the summary is, Jews killed in battle for having donaries or donations made to idols on them. God does not and actually despises idols, and that's usually what happens in the Bible when we see graven images or idols or the Jews adoring different gods is utter destruction. Matthew chapter 13, verse 41 and 42, the son of man will send forth his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all scandals and those who work iniquity and cast them into the furnace of fire where there will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Romans chapter two, verse three and five through nine. But do you think, O man who judges those who do such things and do the same yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? But according to your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you do treasure up to yourself, wrath on the day of wrath. And of the revelation of the just judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his works, life eternal indeed, he will give to those who by patience and good works seek glory and honor and immortality, but wrath and indignation to those who are contentious and who do not submit to the truth, but assent to iniquity. Tribulation and anguish shall be visited upon the soul of every man who works evil, of Jew first and then of Greek. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1-3 through 3, as well as 5. It is actually reported that there is immorality among you, and such immorality as is not found even among the Gentiles, that a man should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned so that he who has done this deed might be put away from your midst. I indeed, absent in body but present in spirit, have already, as though present, passed judgment, to deliver such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. For you yourselves know well that the day of the Lord is to come as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and security, even then sudden destruction will come upon them, as birth pangs upon her who is with child, and they will not escape. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4 through 10, the summary is Jesus inflicts punishment on the godless. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 is, And he, son though he was, learned obedience from the things that he suffered. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17, And if you invoke as father him who without respect of persons judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves with fear in the time of your sojourning. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, Since Christ therefore has suffered in the flesh, do you arm yourselves with the same intent? Because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sins. So we need to suffer. We need to learn through our chastisement so that we can cease from our sins. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 18. Beloved, do not be startled at the trial by fire that is taking place among you to prove you, as if something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are partakers of the sufferings of Christ, that you may also rejoice with the exultation in the revelation of his glory. If you are upbraided for the name of Christ, blessed will you be, because the honor, the glory, and the power of God and his Spirit rest upon you. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or a slanderer, or as one coveting what belongs to others. But if he suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God under his name, or under this name. For the time has come for the judgment to begin with the household of God. But if it begin first with us, what will be the end of those who do not believe the gospel of God? And if the just man scarcely will be saved, where will the impious and the sinner appear? 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4 for God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but dragged them down by infernal ropes to Tartarus, and delivered them to be tortured and kept in custody for judgment. Tartarus is, in Greek mythology, the place where Zeus hurtled the rebel titans. Jude chapter 1 verse 6, And the angels also, who did not preserve their original state, but forsook their abode, he has kept in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Apocalypse, or the Revelation of John, chapter 18, verse 7 and 8, as well as 10. As much as she, or, the, or Babylon the Great, glorified herself and gave herself to wantonness, so much torment and mourning give to her. Because in her heart she says, I sit a queen, I am no widow, and I shall see not Morning, Therefore in one day her plague shall come, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be burnt up in fire. For strong is God who will judge her, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Woe, woe, the great city, Babylon the strong city, for in one hour has your judgment come. And that is the end of this paper on judgment. So the question is, is God going to judge the world? And the very obvious answer to that is yes, God is going to judge the world. By what measure, though, is he going to judge the world? That's important. And we need to remember, he's going to judge by the measure of our faith, our true faithfulness through our works. We have to show after we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, repented, been baptized, gain this Holy Spirit, after all those things, then we need to do our best, absolute best, to follow the law, keep his feast days, keep the Sabbath. All of these things, the commandments, all of them are very important to God. He has relayed them throughout the Bible, um, not inclusively to the Old Testament. The New Testament shows that even after Jesus' death, the apostles went on keeping the Sabbath, keeping the feast days, doing the things that they were doing in the Old Testament. So 2,000 years later, for some reason, we've stopped all these things. But this is all prophesied. The abolishment of God's feast days. Not keeping the Sabbath any longer. Um, the law. All of these things are prophesied about. And it is that time where judgment is near. And we need to remind ourselves that what the Bible says 
is what we need to follow. Whatever you're learning in your churches, if it's not biblical, you should not be listening because what's in the Bible is all we have from God. God left us with this one thing to be able to find truth, and it's the Bible. If you go to a church and they are not ministering, and, and I guess there's some places that will minister only certain parts of the Bible that benefit whatever they're trying to do. That is wrong. We need to, con- we need to have conviction. We need to understand what God really truly wants from his people. Because if we're not doing that, we are misleading you. We are misleading you if we're telling you any other, any other things other than you need to follow the law. You need to keep these Ten Commandments to the best of your ability. You need to keep the Sabbath. You need to follow the feast days. And you need to remind yourself daily that God is going to bless you for these things. It may not feel like it. He, you may feel tormented right now. You may feel like God is coming against you. You're being tested endlessly. But it's that time. You're being tried like silver, like gold. And um, it's time to either pass or fail. And we need to pass. There's enough dark in this world. There's enough reason for God to return and Jesus to return now to judge us. But let's be the light. Let's remind God why he made us. Because there are people here who love and glorify him and what he's done on this earth. We need to show our faith through, through works so that at judgment, God can see not only did we believe that Jesus was the son of God or God in the flesh, but also did we keep what his father wanted? Did we keep what God wanted, his law? And that's going to be important. And that's these scrolls that are going to be opened. And we're going to be judged by these scrolls, the law, the Bible, the, what the prophet said. We need to remember the New Testament is still talking about the feast days, the law and the Sabbath. Judgment is near. Make sure you are doing what God wants you to do. If you are a child of God, search his truth. Search his truth in his Bible. Leviticus 23 is one of the best chapters to understand the holy days. Beyond that, you need to go to the New Testament and look at certain verses where Paul, for instance, instance, is talking about a certain feast day or after a feast day or the apostles receiving the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Like there's, there's things that we should never have abolished, but that's prophesied. The abolishment of his feast days, the abolishment of his law, that there would be no true faith on this earth because true faith is shown through works. And if we don't even know these works because our church isn't teaching us what we need to be doing, that's a big problem. Jesus is going to return and say, there is no faith on this earth. No true faith. There's people who believe in me, but I don't know them. I don't know them. Be known by your God. Be known. He will remember if you do your best to keep his law, his feasts, his Sabbath, and what's biblically correct. You will absolutely be chastised on that journey. But it will, try, it will turn you into a, a better person and you'll be more wise, more knowledgeable, more understanding. You will be able to put these pieces together that you didn't think you would be able to. Because it's a journey and the Holy Spirit is going to release things to you in time. He can't just give you everything at once. Judgment is near and God will judge the world soon. Jesus, return is nigh even at the door. Be ready. Do not wait. Do not put it off. Do not consider that something might happen that will help you in the future to be able to come to God. It's not going to work that way. You need to look. You need to search. And I think being baptized and getting the Holy Spirit is the best way to do that. You will have a little heart string being tugged once in a while and saying like, no, or Question this. And that's what his spirit will do and does. 
God bless you all. Please consider everything I've said with this, this paper on judgment. I, I urge you to also um, go back to part one and see what all of the beginning of that says, because I think it's important that it brings a lot of New Testament relation um, as well as Old Testament relation that very much coincides with one another. So God bless you. Judgment is near. Repent, be saved, and have a wonderful day.